I've been receiving several questions and seen a lot on the internet about frost seeding clover. And that may be appropriate wherever you are. Let's think about, you know, from Canada to the tip of Florida. In Florida, South Florida, they've already planted sweet corn. But when you're in Canada and places like that, there could be a lot of snow on the ground. When are the conditions best to frost seed clover? Well, we're start here in Missouri. We're in southern Missouri. Arkansas is about 15 miles behind me, so pretty far south in Missouri. And I've got some bags of green cover clover in my shop, but they're gonna stay there for a while. Now it's warm today. Gosh, a little heavy in this little light jacket I got on, a little bit warm. But almost always, there's a huge history that we have frost in March and maybe even April. I think back to Daniel taking a new turkey hunting in April, and there was snow on the ground and many turkey hunts were be frosting. So here's the danger. If you seed your clover now, you're going, oh my gosh, it's 70 degrees or 80 degrees. I got to get my clover out early. And it's warm and moist and it does germinate and it gets a quarter inch or half inch tall. Boy, it's really looking good. And we get one of those late March, early April, just killing frost. It's 25 degrees or nine degrees or something. It's going to kill those young plants. There may be a few survive, but many of them are gonna die. Those young plants with a really small root system and they're super tender, their cells have not what plant people call hardened off. It hadn't built many real strong cells in those plants yet. Well, they just freeze and bust. It's like erupting all of the arteries in our body. So I'm not frost seeding yet where I am. If you're quite a bit further south than me, it may be appropriate to be frost seeding now. If you're north of me, I'm telling you it's a little early. Now, summer clover survive, and it's called frost seeding, but some of my best bands have been when we get that late snow, just, you know, small snow, two, three, four inches snow, and I broadcast seed in the snow, it just sinks down real slowly, even if it warms up quickly, and there's ample moisture just saturating that seed warms up, I tend to get a really good stand. Another advantage of snow seeding is you can see exactly where you walked and even to some extent where the seed is spread so you don't get any gaps. I wanna remind everyone what I like to do is say, you know, if I'm planting a quarter acre and I don't wanna plant so many pounds per quarter acre, I weigh that out and I only put a maximum of half of that in my broadcast seeder and I'll go one way, north and south across there. And then I'll take the other half and go right back over east and west. That may seem inefficient, but that assures you get really good coverage and no gaps. Because if you have gaps, you're gonna have weeds. It's often said in the biological world that nature hates a void. It's gonna fill that void in. If you've you know, used a prescribed fire or somehow prepared a seed bed, maybe you're just doing some logging and got a cleared logging deck. If you don't have clover or your crop growing there, there's seed in the soil and it's gonna come up. Those are plants growing where you don't want them to grow, which is the definition of a weed. So frost seeding, I like to time it for one of the last couple of frost or snows. And our best guess is going on the last five year average in your area. Not historical average, because climate has changed somewhat over time, but last five or 10 year average in your area and I like to tell people think, you know, God gave us a brain and think, look what's happening west of you. Our weather in America pretty much comes west, southwest, northwest, west, moving east. Has to do with the way the world spins, the globe spins. So, you know, if it's hot and dry in California and there's just nothing in the forecast all the way through over here to Missouri or even east of us, or if you're on the east coast and you're looking in Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, then maybe you're going that, but I know there's some big snowstorms right now out in California. 10 feet of snow in the Sierras. Lake Tahoe had, you know, like 10, 12 feet of snow in the higher elevations. Doesn't sound like winter's over to me. Some of that may make it this way. The green cover clover seed staying in the shop, a cool, dry place, and I'm waiting for better conditions to put the odds in the favor of that stand germinating and growing without getting hit by a really wicked cold front once it's out of ground. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, PH Outdoors, Moultrie Mobile, Steel, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, Fourth Arrow, 
Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. All this talk about frost seeding, let's also remember a heavy rain can really displace your seed. Usually your frost seeding on ground that's bare, because if you've got competition growing, it's an old hay field or something, those existing plants, especially fescue, are gonna outcompete a lot of that clover seed. A lot, a lot of people broadcast clover into existing pastures to help their livestock, and that's clover here and there. That's not a real solid standard clover like in a food plot. So I don't wanna throw it on bare ground, maybe like over here behind me in the driveway or something, a big old two inch rain comes, it's gonna push a bunch of your clover seed down slope or in piles or low spot or whatever. So I don't want to throw it out with like a two inch rain coming, a half inch rain, fine. So these are some considerations to make sure you don't buy the seed and take time to go plant it and not end up with a good stand. I really like clover, it's a great tool, but it is one tool in the bag. Most of the food plots here at the Proven Grounds too, and with the people we assist with land management plans are gonna be blends. There is no magic bean. One species that's drought resistant, cold tolerant, inexpensive, produces like crazy, deer love to eat it. We come closest to a magic bean by planting blends. But clover, especially for me in little high deal food plots or recently disturbed areas, can be a really good tool to provide high quality protein during the growing season. Think about does either carrying the last trimester of fawns or producing milk, bucks starting to grow antlers. Clover is a really good tool for those situations. Planting a food plot is one of my favorite things to do. And then watching it grow, watching the fruit of your labor is a great way to enjoy creation. Maybe you stick a moultrie up there and get some pictures of deer or turkey using that food plot. But even more important than that satisfaction is making sure we have a satisfied life. And the best way to do that is be very intentional. Seek the Creator's will for your life and apply it daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.